Hey students and a big hello to everyone watching around the Philippines. I am Teacher Mike, your Technology and Livelihood Education teacher. In today's episode, we will discuss the basic parts of a computer system, which will help you gain a better understanding of how each of these parts work together every time we use a computer. So bring out your pen and paper and join me as we build your knowledge towards a better future, one skill at a time. Welcome to TLE9. Study TLE. Let the study come with me. All of the knowledge and all of the skills will help you to be life ready. Will help you to be life ready. In our previous episode, we discussed the different types of computers based on the principles of operations, like the analog digital and hybrid computers. We also discussed the types of computers based on the sizes and functionalities such as the mainframe, mini computers, servers, and microcomputers. And talking about the different types of microcomputers, we have desktops, laptops, netbooks, personal digital assistants, and wearable computers. If you want to go back and watch our previous episodes, all you need to do is go to our official Depet TV YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe as well, okay? Thank you for calling Tech Computer and Services. My name is Michael. How could I help you? Hi, I am having problems with my computer. I was also trying to save a document and it says my memory is full. I don't know what is going on. Sure, let me help you with your concern. One of the possibilities why your computer is slow is probably because the hard disk drive is already full. Wait, what? What is a hard disk drive? Sorry, I'm not very familiar with the other parts of the computer. A hard disk drive is one of your storage devices in your computer, where all the files are being saved. You have probably used up all the storage space, making it difficult for you to save more files. One of the best things you can do is to remove unnecessary files that you don't use. Or, if you think all your files are important, you may want to get an external hard drive you can use to save up your files and serve as your backup. Oh, okay. Thank you very much for your help. Let me work on it today. And just in case it's still slow, you can drop your computer at any tech center close to you and our computer technicians will help and fix your problem. Oh, that's great. I appreciate that a lot. It's always a pleasure to serve you. As a contact center practitioner or even as a student, it is important that we are familiar with the different parts of a computer system. Why? Because by knowing the computer parts, you will be familiarized with some of the computer terminologies. At the same time, learning the parts may lead the way for you to soon be able to fix, upgrade, and even perform a maintenance performance of your computer. Students, are you familiar with some of the basic parts of a computer system? If yes, well that's good. I'm sure that you have already discussed them in your previous years at school. If not, do not worry because we will review them and try to see if you still remember the basic parts of a computer system. We can categorize computer systems into three components. We have the hardware, the software, and the peopleware. Hardware is the physical or tangible part of the computer. When you say tangible, these are the parts you can touch. Some examples are the monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Next, we have software. Software is also known as a program or application that runs on a computer. It also enables a computer to perform a specific task. There are two classifications of software, the system and application software. System software performs all the operations the computer needs to run. A perfect example of this is your operating system like Windows for Microsoft and Mac OS for Apple. While application software performs specific functions like word processing, video editing, and internet browsing. Just remember the physical parts of the computer that can be touched is called a hardware. And a part of the computer that cannot be seen or touched is called software. But to make the hardware work, you will need the software in it. Lastly, we have the peopleware. Peopleware refers to the person that chooses the computer in the development of software and hardware systems. This includes computer engineers, website designers, computer technicians, software designers and engineers, and server administrators. 
Now that we have discussed the three components of a computer system, let us now have a closer look at the basic parts found in your computer system. We have the system unit, monitor, keyboard, mouse, central processing unit, random access memory, read-only memory, motherboard, hard disk drive, power supply unit, cooling fans, and optical drive. Let us have a closer look at each one. The system unit, also known as a tower or the computer case, is the main part of the computer system. It is made of metal or plastic which holds the computer's main components, including the motherboard, central processing unit or CPU, random access memory, read-only memory, ports, and power supply. Also known as a computer screen or visual display monitor, the monitor is a standard output device in a computer as it displays the image, video, and text on the screen. From an old cathode ray tube or CRT monitor, people now want or look for bigger monitors that have a high-definition resolution display, perfect for an excellent viewing or gaming experience. What do you use if you want to message your friends on social media? You use a keyboard. The keyboard is the most commonly used input device and is divided into four parts, alphanumeric, function keys, control keys, and numeric keys. In our future episodes, we will be discussing more of the keyboard and I will also give you some tips on how to practice and type without looking at the keyboard. So you better watch out for that. Next, we have a mouse. A computer mouse is a pointing device that lets you point to objects on the screen. Select, open a program, click on a folder, scroll, and move files around. What's good about the mouse is it gives the user more freedom to move your cursor in any direction on the monitor. You can open a file by double-clicking it, close or open a document with a single click, drag a photo to its folder, and much more. The mouse just made the computer much easier to use. Remember when I mentioned about the system unit? Or do you still remember some of the parts that I have mentioned? If you do, very good, because that is what we are going to have a look at now. Let us now check some of the parts that are found inside the system unit. First, we have the CPU or the central processing unit. The central processing unit is also called the processor and is considered the brain of the computer. Why? Because it controls the operation of all the parts of the computer. The purpose of a processor or the CPU is to perform the actual calculations done by the computer. They carry millions of calculations per second. It's quite impressive when you think of it. A memory is just like the human brain. It can store information, events, knowledge that we can use in the future. Similarly, the computer's memory is used to store programs and data. Computer memory also has two types, the primary and the secondary. Under the primary storage, we have the random access memory and the read-only memory. Random access memory is also called the main memory. RAM is used to store the programs and data being used by the CPU in real time. The data on the RAM can be read, written, and erased any number of times. RAM is a volatile memory which means once the system shuts down, all data stored in the memory will be lost. The other type of memory is the read-only memory. It is used primarily in the startup process of a computer system. ROM is a non-volatile storage and it does not require constant power to retain information stored on it. When the power is lost or turned off, a ROM chip will still keep the data stored on it. So again, remember read-only memory is only used in the startup process of your computer. While random access memory temporarily stores files you are currently using like writing a document, editing photos, and videos for your blog or even playing online games on your computer. However, under the RAM, once you switch off the computer, all the information is lost unless you store all your files in your secondary storage like your hard disk drive. A hard disk drive, sometimes abbreviated as the hard drive HD or HDD, is a non-volatile data storage device. Again, when we say non-volatile, it refers to the data or information that stays in the computer even when it's switched off. Hard disk drives are commonly used as the main storage device on a computer. 
It stores your operating and system software and other files on your computer like photos, videos, office files, music, and so much more. Over the years, the demand for higher storage space has increased and now most computers have a storage capacity as much as one terabyte. That is like 250,000 photos taken with a 12 megapixel camera, 250 movies or 500 hours of high definition videos, or 6.5 million document pages, and it is also equivalent to 1,300 physical filing cabinets of paper. That is massive! A motherboard is the main circuit board and one of the most essential parts of a computer system. The motherboard connects all of the computer's parts such as the central processing unit, memory, hard drives, and other ports and expansion cards connected to the motherboard directly or via cables. And because it holds all the pieces together, we can also call the motherboard the backbone of the computer system. Since a computer is an electronic device, electricity is needed for it to work. And that's when the power supply unit comes in. Found at the back of the system unit, the power supply unit is the piece of hardware that converts the power provided from the outlet into usable power for the many parts of your computer. Cooling fans. A cooling fan is a hardware device that keeps the overall temperature of a computer by circulating air to or from the computer. The CPU handles millions of calculations every second. This is the reason why a cooling fan is necessary to disperse that heat. Maintaining your computer's cooling system can increase their lives and reduce the chance of damage to the other parts inside your system unit. And lastly, we have the optical disk drive. A type of optical drive reads and writes data from an optical disk through laser beam technology. This type of drive allows a user to retrieve, edit, and delete the content from the optical disk such as a compact disk, digital versatile disk or DVD, and Blu-ray disc. Optical drives are among the most common computer components. Although optical disc drives are still in existence today, they have become less used since software, movies, and music can often be downloaded from the internet. Well, there you have it, students. I hope that you're able to understand our topic about the basic parts of the computer. And if you are still a little bit confused, let me summarize it for you in an infographic. Here are the three components of a computer system. We have the hardware, the software, and the peopleware. Any computer part that can be touched is considered hardware, and parts of the computer that can be seen but cannot be touched are software. Under software, we have two types, the system software and the application software. Lastly, we have the peopleware, who uses a computer in developing software and hardware systems. Now let us move on to the basic parts of the computer system. Let us first look at the parts that we see on the outside, like the monitor, keyboard, mouse, and a system unit. When we look at the computer parts found inside a system unit, you will find the following, like motherboard, central processing unit, read-only memory, random access memory, cooling fan, power supply unit, hard disk drive, and optical drive. If you want to get a copy of this infographic, you can go to our TLE9 Facebook page that you see on the screen and download it from there. And now, it's time for another review. It is very easy and all I want you to do is identify which part of the computer appears on your screen. I will give you three seconds to answer. Students, are you ready? Let's start with picture number one. The correct answer is monitor. Picture number two. The correct answer is keyboard. Picture number three. The correct answer is hard disk drive. Picture number four. The correct answer is the system unit. Picture number five. The correct answer is motherboard. Picture number six. The correct answer is the central processing unit. Picture number seven. The correct answer is mouse. 
Picture number 8. The correct answer is the power supply unit. Picture number 9. The correct answer is optical drive. And picture number 10. The correct answer is random access memory. So how many correct answers did you get? I am sure you got a very high score in our activity and because of that, I'd like to congratulate all of you on a job well done. Well, I am not going to leave you just yet without asking you a question. Which part of the computer do you think is the most essential of them all? And which part do you think is the least essential? Explain your answers. Post your answers on our official Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash TLE with Teacher Mike. And do not forget to write your name, grade level, and the name of your school. And in your post, always use the hashtag TLE with Teacher Mike. Students, I cannot wait to read your answers. Well, we've reached another part of our program and I do hope that you learn a lot from our topic today. In our next episode, we will discuss the connection between the PC hardware and peripheral devices. Once again, I'm Teacher Mike, your grade 9 TLE teacher, leaving you with the message that before posting something on social media, think before you click. Give yourself time to think about the answers to the following questions. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it interesting? Is it necessary? Or is it kind? Once again, thank you for watching Depit TV and I'll see you next time.